Hello everybody and welcome to X-Plane 10. I am Drifter, also known as MVHD, and uh, today we're going to be doing a flight from San Diego to Phoenix. Um, so right now I got the aircraft, just the basics started, so the aircraft that I'm going to be flying today is the FlyJ Sim Dash 8 Q400. I personally love flying this aircraft. This aircraft is amazing. Uh, the 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 handling on it is just amazing. I love it. Um, I'm still getting used to it. I still got some rough landings. Um, still getting used to the to the power. Uh, usually I'm used to flying like 737, 747, so on and so forth. Um, so it's flying this type of prop plane since I just bought this maybe three days. I want to say three days ago. I just bought this aircraft, and um, so far I'm liking it. I there's every everything I love about this thing. I'm still get, I'm still getting used to it. Um, still getting a feel for it, still learning the system, so I'm kind of reading off a little bit of paper here and there, trying to memorize and uh, get used to working this aircraft. So today we're on the VATSIM network, so if we pull up the uh, VATSPY, you can see, let's see, so you can see it says we're at the San Diego North Island, which we are not, but I think it's just that, uh, I don't know, that's weird. Uh, we are definitely at San Diego. We're definitely at San Diego, so I don't know exactly why it's saying we're at uh, uh, we're at the North Island, but um, turn our night vision so you guys get a better feel for where we're at. So here we go, we get a better look of where we're starting from, and uh, yeah. So I'll show you guys all the plans, uh, our approaches, and so on. So let's actually exit out there. All right. So we'll jump into the cockpit real fast and. Uh, Alright, so here we go. So, we already got our batteries on. Uh, we didn't uh, go any further than that, though. We just got our batteries on to, to light up the cockpit and the outside with the, some of the position lights. So, um, I'm not so I'm gonna do you guys so you guys can see here. This is where I just figured out where to start my gate from. I just use Google Maps to kind of figure out where realistically a dash uh, Q400 will park. And you know, just park around this area here, but we're not parked. We're not going there for um, tonight. So since I'm on VATSIM right now, um, it's not, uh, it's not, um, there's no uh, controllers on tonight, so I'm just going to have to wing it, I guess, and just watch out for the traffic nearby, just keep my eyes on a VAT spy here, and it, it's pretty empty all around, um, you got Delta Airlines there going from uh, Los Angeles to uh, New York, you got two people sitting here at Los Angeles. Uh, one has plans to San Francisco, or actually doesn't even have a flight plan. The other guy, oh, yeah, he's going to San Francisco. United Airlines is uh, 1242 is going to uh, San Francisco, and then SkyWest 29 is doesn't have a flight plan in yet. Same, uh, same with ourselves, we don't have a flight plan in yet, but we'll get one. You can see another Alaska Airlines, uh, Alaska 334 going into uh, San Jose, and um, yeah. So since I'm I'm really new to VATSIM, like I literally just started comms tonight uh, or earlier today. Um, so there's a lot of things I get lost in. So I don't know. I'm probably gonna start doing more of these videos. But the thing is that I'm very new to VATSIM, so I the 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 talking over frequencies the way they actually got it like realistically it's kinda hard to understand and there's a lot of things that I don't really understand there's a lot of things that I don't do like a real pilot would or you know um, things like that but of course I do follow flight plans I do follow ATC um, instructions so on there's a lot of things that I'm learning and I'm still uh, watching videos for and just reading around uh, I've been flying flight sims for on a roughly a solid five, six years now, so quite some time, honestly. Even when I was younger, when I when FSX first came out, um, Flight Simulator X, not FS9 or anything, um, but I wasn't into the serious uh, sim as I am now, uh, such as going into vet sim. All right, so. Uh, I, re I I fly a lot of San Diego to. Uh, uh, Phoenix, I'm very, I'm pretty familiar with it. I'm not 100% though. Um, so we're gonna be taking the uh, Pogi three and IPL uh, departure. So uh, 
You see here we got the route here. So first route is going to be Jetty, then Loma, uh, then Pogi, and then we're going to go to IPL, and uh, IPL will always be our transition. Um, and then for our arrival, uh, for our arrival we're going to be taking the uh, Gila 6, if that is available, if Gila 6 is available in our, um, in our FMC, we'll be taking that. Uh, as far as I'm aware, though, what Simroutes gave me was Gila 4. I don't know if they're, if that's, uh, I don't really know if that's correct or not. I mean, the only thing that I really got on the VatSim.com, uh, charts was, uh, the Gila 6. So this one, uh, seems like what we're going to be taking here if it's in our FMC, which, uh, th this route, this plane, uh, since I am new to it, I never actually even flew San Diego to Phoenix, um, yet with it, but I have with other aircraft. I did have, uh, these, uh, arrival, uh, this arrival plan. So, and then we got our approach plan, our approach here, uh, which is just basically approach into runway 26 right. Um... And, or no, 2-5 right, excuse me, not 2-6 right, it's 2-5 right. And, uh, that's pretty much gonna be our plan for today. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna be running into anybody soon, I mean, like I said, it's pretty empty here. Um, so yeah. No towers on tonight, so no communications, which is kind of good for me, it kind of gets me a little bit of time to familiarize myself with the routes. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, we'll go ahead and start getting our aircraft ready, and, uh, I don't think this is, oh, this is, uh, K-SAN approach, I accidentally opened up that one. So, we're gonna keep these charts open, uh, just so we could reference them, uh, later. And we'll go back into our game, and we'll start, uh, getting, uh, further started, and then we'll get our flight plan in once we, after we program our FMC. And, um... So yeah, so we got our batteries on, uh, we got our uh, bus tie, uh, main bus tie, which is already set on. Uh, if you can hear a TV in my background and like a fan or something in the background, sorry, I just like to watch TV when doing flight sims, that way when I'm at cruising, I just can sit back and watch or whatever. So you can hear that, and sorry I have it turned down. Uh, so APUs are going to come on, so we're going to run our power, then we're going to hit start, then we're going to go gen, and we're going to go bleed air. Alright, cabin, alt uh, cabin altitude is just we're going to leave that on auto. And uh, for air conditioning, the pack's already set to auto for us in this aircraft, so all we got to do is turn on the recirc uh, recircle fan. And then uh, once we're done with that, uh, we go over, well really what we do is we would go over here and flick the um, advisory, the test caution advisory, so... We'll go ahead and just do that to show you guys. And it's going to be a really loud noise, so it's going to be really annoying. So I'm going to keep it on for a second or two. Alright, so all the lights are working. I uh, saw down here lights were working, so I think we're good on that. Um, not that there's really any large failures that happen at this phase unless you uh, accidentally miss a battery or something maybe, but I haven't had that so far. So air conditioning, we go back up to the air conditioning panel. And uh, we're gonna turn our bleeds to our bleed to um, minimum. Uh, we're still gonna leave the bleeds off. Don't need those on. So if we go back to our uh, pilot seat. There we go. Finally. All right. So checks. Now this is where we're gonna do the uh, FMC or the FMS. So in this in this case, you would check your um, you check your M your PFD MFD and so on, so they all look good to me, um, no issues here. So now we, that's when we get into the FMC now, let me just turn this here. So, you can see we just have the default FMC, but we're not going to be using that because we have XFMC. So if I hit F9, it's going to bring up this FMC here, and uh, we're going to be using this for tonight. It works just fine. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go and hit the FMC button, and then this is just basically our information. Um, which we don't really need any anything vital from there. Uh, we're going to go into the uh, posi uh, it. so basically where we're going to put our uh, position position initialization. So we're going to put our starting airport, or our starting airfield, and that's going to be KSAN for San Diego. Drop that in there, and we go over to route. And the origin's already going to be there because we just entered that, so we're going to we're going to now type in KPHX for Phoenix uh, Sky Harbor. 
then what we're going to do is we're going to hit the activate and then we hit execute and then uh, when we do that it's all activated you can see our height is uh, the height is set um, and then it also have all of our uh, stuff here so now what we're going to do is now we're done with that we're going to go to departures and arrival and then we're going to go to departure for k and we're going to choose uh, runway 27 for departure hit execute and then we're going to find the uh, POGI 3 and IPL uh, right here, POGI 3 IPL uh, transition. We hit execute and uh, we're basically done there. So now what we're going to do is hit departs and arrivals again. We go to the Phoenix tab or the Phoenix uh, drop and then we go to the arrival. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go for uh, 2 5 right and I think they uh, is different than some of the, uh, some of the other uh, FMC. So 2 5 right hit execute and then with this one we were going with the uh, GLA 6 okay so it is GLA 6 on here so that's actually perfect so we're gonna go with the GLA 6 and uh, we'll go with the uh, BLH uh, tra transition I can, or uh, I don't know if that's actually changed. let me see um, this is actually good because on the chart here the Blith that's what it stands for that's the name I was trying to, the Blythe or uh, Blith that was called Blith so that was the exact transition I, or uh, yeah transition I was actually hoping we'd be getting so the BLH and GLA 6 so we're gonna go ahead and choose that one and then we'll hit execute and then uh, transition let's go back to the chart here I think Zerlo let's see where's Zerlo I think Zerlo yeah okay Zerlo so here we go transition so we transitioned from the um, arrival to approach and then uh, Zerlo so that will be perfectly fine so let's go back into our game and we'll hit uh, actually wait I think the IWA is actually better let me just make sure here this is my first time reading this chart uh, with Phoenix so um, still getting a feel for things here so IWA we'll just take the Zerlo approach and, or um, trans or uh, what was it? It was transition it said it was transition I think yeah so uh, let's hit Zerlo and then we'll do RNAV. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do RNAV approach and we hit uh, execute and it basically enters our route here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this is correct. So we got the jetty uh, coming out. That's 8,000. So we expect 8,000 after that, 230. And um, that's exactly how it shows on our chart here. So 8,000 at 230 knots. And then once we hit Loma, we should be at 15,000, which is actually going to be our cruising altitude. And then uh, once we hit uh, Pogi, I think it's just from there on, it's just 15,000. So uh, you can see it's not on here yet. That's because we didn't enter in our uh, trans or um, not transition, our uh, cruising altitude yet, which we will in the future settings. But 250 knots uh, from there on, uh, due to we haven't even entered since so zero. And uh, we'll just check. So we got the Jetty Loma Pogi, um, Browse IPL. So we got that here, so perfect there, and then we're going to go over to our approach here, and uh, or arrival, uh, so we got the uh, Blith, we then have Skull, uh, Spink, I actually think that's, uh, let me see, Spink's uh, Sin Sinra, let me check if that's all there, so Spink Sinra, Lizard, uh, that's all correct, I know, and then the rest of the route is going to be Hyger, then... Uh, rock, rick, uh, rictum, rictum, rick, rock, dam, I don't know. I don't know exactly. So, Hydra, Gila, Monster, uh, Hens, uh, Lucy, Nimbe, Gatwa, uh, UVO, Tay, and then that was, yep, and then there we go. So, that's basically going to line us up. So, these last few uh, um, points here, or waypoints, are going to line us up for runway 225 uh, right. So, that's good. So we got our departures and arrivals set up. Uh, looks to be no mistakes here. Looks like we're all good on the uh, on the route here. Looks good to me. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the init reference and we're going to go to performance. And this is where we're going to enter the weight. Performance page. I'm going to say that. So now with this aircraft, it comes with its own weight uh, uh, weight manager here. So uh, load and balance. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to enter a cruise altitude so that way we get the correct view here. So our cruise altitude is going to be 15,000 for this flight. And you can see that the fuel planned fuel is at negative 3,000 so we need to actually bump that up so that we have a little bit of extra fuel just in case we need to do a go around 
or possibly go to a different airport. Now we're going to be carrying a pretty heavy um, load of people, so we're going to randomize the people, and that seems about good right there. So we have 454. Uh, probably once we once we land, we should have at least that mu that amount of fuel left, or around that uh, around that. Uh, count there so that's fine that'll do us uh, perfectly fine it's not it's not gonna affect us uh, at all so uh, what we're gonna do is we hit the gross weight so we're gonna put that in there so that number uh, up here we're gonna actually put in to the uh, option here so 60 562 fuel load and there we go so now with the reserves, um, I'm not going to put the reserves, I don't really, uh, I mean, I don't really, I don't need to put the reserves. Um, so, a uh, cost index, I just, just put 45 or 50 or something. Um, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't really affect anything uh, of your flight, along with even flying in bats. And, you know, thrust limit. Alright, then we get the uh, weather, so, or the temperature. So there usually would be an ATIS on, um, but I don't really trust the ATIS with, the, uh, with you know, built into the game when you're flying uh, that sim. So uh, 17 degrees Celsius is what our temperature is going to be for tonight. So basically we will not need any uh, anti-ice uh, systems on, at least for takeoff. But once we hit cruising altitude, if they do get, uh, if the temperatures do Take drop off, low, data. we will have to do that. All right, so for our flaps, we'll uh, we'll go to uh, 15 degrees of flaps here, and we'll just click these to get rid of that and enter that in. So 15 degrees of flaps is going to be our takeoff, and looks like we're all good here. All right, so we're going to go back to the our last one just to make sure. Okay, it's all entered in our unit ref. And we're basically done. So the approach. Uh, basically, it just shows the approach on uh, how fast we're going to go, but this, this, F this FMC is not correct with the speeds. Um, if you enter f at 153 knots with 30 at 35 degree of flaps, it's you're going to float uh, really bad. So I'm not going to follow this um, exactly um, due to I've tried it before and it doesn't really work out very well. So basically, we're done with the FMC now. Uh, we have our route. We have all of our weight calculations in. We have all that. Um, and then we have this in, so we just hit exit or hit the X, and uh, we're basically done. Now we could further on with our um, with our uh, preparation of the aircraft. So uh, we did the checks, uh, circuit breakers. Don't have to check them. Um, they're not you, know, you don't have to do any of that with this aircraft, thankfully. Uh, position lights. So now our position lights are already on, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so now we're on the before start checklist. So lights, emergency lights are armed. Uh, transponder is going to be, uh, well, since we don't have a controller on anywhere, um, can't really do much with it, so we'll just set it to on for now, I guess it'll just be 0000, zero, zero, zero and uh, that'll, that'll be fine. Um, if a controller does end up popping on, uh, we'll probably see if we could get a, a squawk, or um, a number for a transponder squawk. But for now, let's leave that as default and on and alt. So, um, check. So, fuel quantity. Let's make sure that entered in. Uh, we're entered in. We're good there. And uh, brake pressure. Brake pressure is good. All right. Departing uh, briefing is complete. So, now we go on to the uh, engine starting. So, now we're clear for engines. Uh, since we're not doing a pushback, um, which this aircraft does also have its own pushback system. Uh, we'll go ahead and close the uh, PAX uh, door, so the passenger door, let's make sure that it actually closes up. Alright, we're all locked up and ready to go, so let's go and get back into the cockpit here, and we'll go ahead and uh, start getting our, ready, our engines ready. So, uh, take off in V speeds, let's go and get those set up right now. So, V1, since we're at 60,000, I already know the configuration for this, uh, just flying this aircraft for... The, few day, past days that I've been flying it. So V1 will be, it's supposed to be 114, but uh, 115 is close enough. Uh, VR uh, rotate is going to be also 115. 
Uh, V2 is going to be, it's supposed to be 116, uh, 117. Uh, we'll just, we'll try to get to, one, okay, 116, that's perfect. All right, and then uh, for the uh, climb out, we'll have it at 128. And 129 is close enough. And then for that, uh, we'll have it at 151. 150 is perfectly fine. So basically, when we're climbing out, uh, we'll be at one, uh, 150 once we get full, once we get our flaps up. Um, we'll then increase our speed to uh, 230 knots as uh, displayed on the um, on the charts. So right now I'm just going to get a feel for where we're at right now. So we're at the commuter ramps and basically the where we have to go is we're going to have to follow just basically Taxiway Bravo. So we're going to take out here uh, we're gonna go out here and then uh, to the left or to the right, excuse me, and then uh, that's Taxiway Bravo out there, and we'll be lined up for uh, Runway 27 for San Diego or heading out for Phoenix. So let's continue here. Um, so throttle quad, let's uh, go down here and make sure that the um, this lever here, these levers here, one and two, are on the power levers are on disconnect or DIC or DISC. And uh, condition levers are going to be pulled all the way back to fuel off. Um, just to make sure that uh, you don't uh, make any mistakes here. Alright, so our V-speeds are checked and we're going to be bringing those throttles back up here in a bit. Um, seat belt signs are now coming on while it's smoking. And uh, anti-collision lights are now clear to go red. All right, APU control, uh, APU bleed air off. Uh, throttle quad now, we're going to bring the qu throttle quads back up to start and feather, which is about there. All right, and uh, we're basically ready for engine start, so we're going to go over here to the co-pilot seat, and we're going to flip the switches, or the knobs to normal. And uh, we're going to start engine number two first. We're going to hit this button, we're going to hear the engines start up. And let's go ahead and go back here for a window view of the startup. Alright, and there goes the prop spinning up. Alright, there goes engine number two. Let's go ahead and get ready for engine number one. Alright, so let's make sure that switch gets flipped back to the middle, and it is, so let's go hit it twice to engine number one, and we'll hit start. And now we'll get our other engine coming to life here. Alright, so our engines are fully started at this time, and uh, if I can just switch to the panel, there we go. So, switch is back in place, and uh, we're good to go for the engines. So now after start, we're going to turn off our APU stuff, we don't need that on anymore. Air conditioning, we're going to turn the bleeds on and make sure it is on uh, minimum still. Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, the throttle quad, so we're not at the pushback part. Well, we don't have to do the pushback because, of course, we're already facing outward. So we'll go here, and uh, we're going to get our condition levers, or our prop levers, up to max. And make sure those brake, uh, parking brakes are checked, because right now the aircraft wants to go forward. Once you uh, hit those out to max... Alright, so Auto Feather is now able to come on. We're going to set our flaps to 15 degrees. We'll turn our fuel pumps on. We'll turn, turn on our standby hydraulic press and our PTU control. And uh, we'll make sure our rudders have full travel, which I have to actually turn on if I enable that. Alright, that's good. And left rudder is good. 
Alright, so that's good for the checks. Uh, PFD, MFD, ED, all good. No problems here. And uh, we'll go ahead and set up our autopilot before we start taxing out. That way that uh, when we get up in the air, we could toss on the autopilot. So we're going to make the, uh, uh, just as a controller would say, fly runway heading. So, you know, clear for takeoff, fly runway heading. Uh, in this case, it would be 2-7. Um, we're going to try to line it up uh, with that uh, red line there, so that way it'll fly our route properly. And uh, al altitude, we'll just go straight for 15,000. Actually, no way. We'll, we'll follow the uh, FMC here. So we'll go to pull up our FMC. We'll go to legs here. Uh, jetty is 8,000. So we'll bring that to 8,000. So we'll expect that at jetty at uh, 230 knots. And then uh, once we hit Loma, we'll expect uh, 15,000. Alright, so we got our runway heading, we got our altitude, so let's go ahead and set uh, those on, so in that way when we take off, we already have it on. So we have the heading on, we have the uh, altitude, or well, the altitude select, and we'll have the uh, virtual or vertical speed, we'll bring that to... Uh, we'll go with a vertical speed of 1800. Uh, let's see what else. And I think we're good for autopilot. That's all we really need. And then, of course, we'll select the uh, the nav button here, the L nav button, and uh, that will basically follow our route without us having to do it. All right. So, do some checks here. So, um, ice protection, uh, any ice protection. We don't need that for now. Uh, transponder, we don't, uh, we already have that set on alt for now, um, and there's no controllers on, we just double check actually. Alright, no controllers on, so we'll just leave that as it is. Alright, brakes are checked, altimeter, um, altimeter for San Diego, um, I believe I already have that set. No, I do not, yeah I do, I think we do. That's alright though. Alright, uh, takeoff power rating, we're going to set that to where we hit end top here. And then uh, you'll see it's just 90% uh, as default there, so. Alright, so we're going to check our flying controls before we head out here. Make sure that they're free and correct. Alright, free and correct as they are on the little uh, graph down here. And then also our rudder. As you can see our rudder moving there. And then uh, we'll do brakes, but uh, we're still going to do another check up here. And we're all good, so we'll do the brakes here real quick, and uh, we're going to check this uh, lot bar here. So there we go, so our brakes are good to go. So let's get our uh, taxi light on. Let's also get our uh, tail logo on, and uh, we'll be good to go. Alright, so we're going to be taxiing to runway 27 via taxiway Bravo. And let's go ahead and start getting, let's get out of here. So we'll set this to taxi for now. And uh, we'll try to avoid those over there. Check our left, left clear, right clear. I'll follow this taxi line out of here. Alright, so we'll go ahead and hold on runway 27 just to get some uh, flight checks here and uh, go and activate our parking brake for now. Make sure it's set. Alright. So we're just going to check down the runway, make sure that uh, down runway is clear of aircraft traffic. Alright, left looks clear. Right looks clear. So we're going to step on out of here. If it will let me back in the... There we go. Okay. So on our lineup, what we're going to do is we're going to set the pedo heats on. I forgot to enable those. Whoops. I thought I turned those on earlier, but I guess not. Alright, so... The aircraft will accelerate anymore, so we're going to now set the uh, spoilers from taxi to flight. We'll set our uh, anti-collision to white. 
we'll turn on our uh, wing lights and we'll turn on our yeah, landing lights, we'll we could take off our taxi lights now Go and get turned out here. All right, so we're good on that. All right, so now all we gotta do is take off, and uh, the rest is just in the air. So following out the route and the runway heading, um, we'll go and turn on our chronometer now. That way we get an exact timing. Come on, there we go, okay. That, that didn't do it. All right, let's go and hold here so I get the set. Okay, so hit that, and there we go. All right, so we're all set on the runway. We got our flaps set, we got our uh, levers set, and uh, we're good to fly on out of here. So we'll stabilize. All right, release the brakes. Full power. The wind is going to push us a little bit here. We'll go and correct that as needed. And once we hit uh, one one five knots, that is going to be V one and rotate. So it's coming up here. There we go, rotate. Alright, we got a little bit of uh, push to the left here. It's because of the rotor or the uh, the uh, props, the torque. How's the right gear up? Alright, and we'll go and lift uh, claps up to 10. Keep on flying runaway heading. bit bumpy. Alright, flaps up to five degrees. Try to get our speed, try to get up. Alright, let's go ahead and make some corrections here. And we'll go on and turn our autopilot to let it fly for us a bit while we get everything else set up. So we're going to set our climb power, we're going to de- uh, we're actually not going to decrease, yeah we'll go ahead and decrease it so we don't kill our engines here, so if they will actually, there we go, so we'll bring the props back to 900 RPM, pull the throttles back a little bit, and uh, we'll zoom in on our route here so we can actually see how close we are to the next waypoint. Alright, we're good on the engines, and once we hit the next waypoint, we'll go ahead and, uh, so we'll bring flaps up all the way, and we'll go ahead and pitch up to get 18,000, we'll go ahead and turn on our LNAV, turn the nav source to FMS, and there we go. So hit that waypoint there, we're good to go, we're increasing speed, and we didn't hit 8,000, um, honestly that's a steep climb to try to hit 8,000 at the first waypoint, um, especially with this, this aircraft, if I were to do that, um, the aircraft would uh, literally just stall out um, completely, so um, I don't think that's gonna, I don't think that's gonna help out too much, honestly. Um, so anyways, right now I say we're cleared to flight level 150, as going to be our cruising altitude for uh, this flight, and uh, we'll leave our altimeters as it is, uh, standby and hydraulic pumps can now come off in the PTU, uh, fuel pumps can now come off, uh, that's optional, I just turned them off, um, auto feather can now come off as well. And uh, looks like we're on our way to the next waypoint, so a nice view of the city there. You can see San Diego right there we just took off from, very nice. Very nice view of San Diego. So 
we're going to continue getting our checks here. So we're basically done. All we got to do is let the plane fly itself. And uh, once we hit cruising, we got some more checks to do. Alright, so we had a few nice views there on the wings, and we're still climbing out. And uh, we go ahead and uh, increase our altitude to a to a flight level uh, one five zero, and we're going to set our vertical speed there. Just disabled on this for there for some reason, so we're going to set that back up. Uh, we'll climb out to we'll have a vertical speed of uh, fifteen hundred. And uh, we'll hit altitude select, so that way when we get closer to that altitude, we'll uh, be at the ready. So our next waypoint is uh, Poggy. So there, we'll actually have to hit 15,000. We are expected to be at 15,000. And uh, you see the airport off to the left there. Very nice view of uh, San Diego, all the road systems, all the highways, even the airport itself in that, uh, in that shot there, really, really cool. So, uh, got no kind of warnings here, no lights here, so that's perfect, that's good, that's what we want. So we're just climbing through 10,000, so now we could uh, turn off our landing lights, and uh, also turn off our tail and logo, and we'll go and... Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and turn those off as well. That's fine. As long as we have our position into collision, we are good to go. Alright, uh, let's check temperature. Oh yeah, we're getting through the, uh, we're getting under 10, so we're going to start uh, getting some of our, uh, we're going to start getting some of our anti-ice uh, going here. So we'll, uh, the only option we have is fast, so... On uh, airframe, select manual. I think that just goes through the entire thing. So yeah, there we go. Got some anti-ice protection going on, and uh, you see it's going through all the uh, systems here and whatnot. We're making our turn. Yeah, here we go. So we're past uh, Puggy through now on our way to Browse, and uh, we're just at uh, two. Uh, 200, about to hit 246 knots here. Uh, so yeah, let's see here. Going to try to keep on increasing our speed. I don't want to go... Oh, sorry, that's my team speak. I don't want to go full uh, thrust here, because that will just overheat the engines. It'll overdo the engine then we'll have bad things happen so something that we don't want to do all right so back up in the cockpit we're now 10 minutes and 20 seconds into our flight and uh, currently 6.1 nautical miles out from Imperial in the uh, IPL India Papa Lima or um, uh, waypoint and we're just now at 15,000 our cruising altitude so if we open up our FMS there we go to IPL our, alt or our speed is going to be too soon so let's start slowing it down make sure that we remain around the 270 knots area so let's go ahead and uh, Open up that spy and uh, let's see. Where we're currently, yeah. So there we are right now. We want to refresh just to see if there's any controllers on. Doesn't look like it. So we're there. We're Alaska zero five zero eight. And uh, currently on our way. All right. So I'd say 15 minutes into the flight. 
Uh, currently at a cruising altitude at a, a stable speed. Uh, not any turbulence as of right now. See, we've got a little bit of crosswind going on here, but it's not affecting us uh, as to uh, hitting us with a lot of bumps or anything. So I think it's safe to turn off the fasten seatbelt sign to allow our uh, passengers to move free about the cabin, use the bathroom, whatever they need to do. The captain has turned off the seatbelt sign. You may now take off your seatbelt. Oh, I love that sound so much. It's so cool how they imp implemented that sound into this aircraft. Instead of just a boring single beep or something like that, I actually have like a flight attendant uh, kind of simulating back there. We got an airport off here to our left. Two of them. Not sure what airports those are. I think we'll feel, uh, if we zoom this out, we should be able to see, maybe. So let's see, it's, oh, it's really hard to see. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm not really familiar with those airports out there. So I don't, I don't know what the airports those are. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think, uh, I don't know if that's, I don't know where 20, I can't remember where 29 Palms was. I don't think that's one of them, though. I'm pretty, I don't, no, I don't think that's one of them. I don't even, I don't know. Alright, so just a little update on uh, all of our bearings now. Uh, right now we're going for the BLH uh, waypoint, which is 51 nautical miles out at this time. We're now 50 now, so uh, still at our cruising, still at our uh, speed, uh, 267 knots, which is uh, perfectly fine. Uh, so we got two, I think we're actually clear for 280 now that we passed IPL. Um, IPL was 270, and BLH is now 280, so we're clear for 280 now. Usually I don't like to actually go up to 280, uh, mainly due to the fact that the wind is blowing. Uh, once we get closer, I think there's going to be a little bit of winds, and you can see the wind is actually pushing us. Um, so I don't want to go up to 280, and next thing you know, I'm going into the uh, overspeed. Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to do that. So two seven maintain two seven zero knots is perfectly fine for me. Um, I mean it's safer that way, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be on our way. So uh, we're we're almost. I think the uh, BLH is the uh, 
Blith Blithra, I think it was what the uh, waypoint was. So we go to our uh, arrival chart. Yeah, Blith, B L H. So uh, once we hit that, next is gonna be Skull or Spink. I can't exactly remember. Yeah, Skull then Spink then uh, Sun Sun Sunra, I guess. I guess we'll call it, and then Lizard. So we're almost there. Let me check this, uh, that spy and see. So yeah, we're about half the distance right now. So I usually when I go into flights, I always just look over in Europe and see, and all over, just see if there's any controllers on. You see yeah, at the bottom it says uh, eleven controllers, nine ADSs, three observers, and uh, one hundred and eighty-five pilots. So. Um, they don't have too many in the U.S. right now due to I'm um, flying this at 12 or 12:53 uh, a.m. Uh, Alaska Standard Time. I'm here in real life. I'm flying down here in game. So basically, we're behind everyone, or majority of everyone. Alright, uh, I'm the only one going to Phoenix, I'm the only one leaving San Diego, um, yeah, so, really don't have anything else to do, again, um, probably get some more updates, and, uh, once we get closer to, uh, the Blithra approach, is it, is it Blithra, I always forget it, Blith, Blith, Blythe, Blith, and I'm just calling it Blith, so, Let's call it that. So, I'll probably just cut us near there, probably get some more scenery views, um, uh, window views, outside views, and so on. Alright, so, an update, so, 29 minutes and 25 seconds into the flight, almost 30 minutes, uh, we are currently approaching the BLH, uh, waypoint, or Blith, as we're gonna call it, and, uh, BLH, um, gonna be at 15,000 now, uh, Skull, Spink, and, uh, Center, we're gonna ignore those, uh, we're gonna ignore those, um, altitude limits, uh, for now, uh, we don't need, really need to. Uh, we're, we're not going to follow those. Uh, we're going to we're going to stay at 15. So before we take this turn, let's go and turn on our fasten seatbelt sign. The captain has turned on the seatbelt sign. Please return to your seat and fasten your seatbelt. All right, all right. We are getting closer to our destination. We are now five nautical miles out from Sonora. Let's open up our uh, VAT spy here. You can see that uh, we're about, I'd say, two two fourths of the way there. Uh, maybe about one, about a, I say I meant uh, about two thirds of the way there. About to be three fourths of the way there here in a bit. Once we cover up some more ground, once we get the lizard, we should be about three fourths of the way there. So. Alright, a little bit of the wing there, uh, wing view there for you guys on the turn, and uh, right now we're going to Hydra, which is the 1.5 nautical miles out, so we're right there. Uh, next we're going to be hitting the waypoint of uh, Gila, you can see here, so Gila, and uh, right now we're going to start slowing down to 250 knots, cut the throttles about halfway, slows down pretty good. So we're crossing Hydra at 265, slowing down, Gila's are right there, so we're slowing down for Gila at 250 knots, and then Monster is right there, so once we hit Monster, that's when we're going to start a descent down to 11,000 for Henson, 
Right now we're heading to Monster, so again, once we hit Monster, once we pass Monster, we are uh, descending down to 11,000 uh, for the Henson Waypoint. So we're four nautical miles out right now, so once we're clear, we're going to turn our fuel pumps on. Uh, we're going to have our anti-ice as required, so it's not 10 degrees Celsius yet. Once it hits 10 degrees, we can then turn off our anti-ice, which is up here. See, it's still going. It's still going. All right, and then uh, we'll also turn on our standby hydraulic pumps and PTU controls. We'll also turn on. Uh, well, we'll check our quant our hydraulic quantity and pressure, um, which we don't really need to check. And then we'll make sure our seat belt signs are on, which they already are. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we have that already. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the uh, display there. And we hit monster, we are cleared down to 11,000. So we'll go ahead and set our VS, and we'll go start descending. We'll go at 800, Let's see how much, we got, a, we got a lot of space to cover, or a lot of uh, ground to cover on the next waypoint, so. We'll go ahead and go, that'll be good. See here. Let's zoom out actually to see. Okay, yeah, we got a little bit of room here to start our start descending at this rate. So right now at Henson we should be at uh, two five zero, which we are. And uh, now that we're on our descent or our beginning of the descent, uh, we'll go ahead and turn our fuel pumps on, get our standby hydraulic and PTU on. And uh, seatbelt signs already on, and then uh, right now we just have to wait till our, our approach and our landing, and uh, we're basically just sitting here cruising again or uh, descending now. So let's actually increase the uh, descent to 1500 just to make it go a little bit faster here. That way we actually hit the proper. Uh, altitude when we get there, because Henson is right there. It's getting, we're getting closer. So I think it's like uh, 19. We'll go 1500 for it. We'll keep it around 250. And we'll increase a little bit. Actually, we're going pretty fast towards that waypoint, so we'll go ahead and increase. We're already 8.5 out, and we expect 11,000, so 9,000 at Lucy. Getting a little bit over 250 knots there, so it starts uh, slowing it down a bit. And 11,000 is our mark. And there we go, we're passing through 11,000 now, so let's go ahead and decrease the vertical speed to 800. And make sure that we're keeping our speed up as we're doing that. And it'll change. Now we're on to Lucy. We're going to make a small left bank here. And now on to Lucy for 9,000. So here, and then next is going to be NIMBY for nine for 7,000, all the way up to uh, U, uh, U, UVO. UVO, I guess. And then we'll go to Tay. Tay is Amex and uh, Uxcon. Then we're at 2.5 right. Alright, so you saw, you can see uh, Phoenix over there, so we're now making our bank here, so we're going to be going down to 7,000. 7,000 it is. Set altitude selector. Purple speed. Whoa, the aircraft just went to a little bit of nosedive there. I think it was just a little technical difficulty there with some some sundown settings, not sure what that was all about. Looks like we have another aircraft over there actually, not an AI either. So I have that disabled. 
So 7,000 for the next waypoint. So now we're not going to probably do any more cinematic views, but uh, due to now we're just working on our approach here. So let's try to keep it under. So we're going to turn on our lights here. So that way we don't forget. All right. So we're now on to NIMBY. So from NIMBY, we just maintain 7,000 until we get to uh, Uva, uh, UV, UVO. Once we hit UVO, we will then descend down to 5,000 for Tei. And uh, from here, we're going to maintain uh, 210 knots. So we're going to decrease speed here. Uh, no flaps yet. And, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, get ready for our uh, final. Nice view of Phoenix there on the... Uh, on the left hand window there, a little bit of speed there, so. Just want to get that last cinematic view, and uh, right now, well actually no, I might be able to do some more. We got some, we got some straights here, just to make sure that we maintain 210 knots. As requested, or said on the FMS, so. Uh, I think this will be good about here. I think that throttle setup will hold us there. Take zero low off for those. There we go. So now we're just going to make a straight U-turn and then in for 2-5 right. Let's hope we get a good landing. So you can see the landing lights are poking through the aircraft there, but it's fine. It doesn't affect the visual uh, you know, in any way, shape, or form. So well, we're fine. We are fine. Let's bring our route back in here. That way we can see what we're crossing and what we're doing. Alright, so I know some people are probably asking like why I turn my uh, landing lights on so early. Um, usually it's because I always end up forgetting um, on the approach. Um, I do my approaches manual. I don't use a lot of ILS or anything like that to so get a little window view here while we make this turn. So I don't really do a lot of uh, ILS um, like you know landings where basically it does only you know once I get into maybe 16 miles out or something like that from the airport I'll fly it all manual um, of course on this approach you know I let it line up for me with the waypoints that we that I have set and again I'm not a, I'm not a pilot in any way shape or form in real life or anything like that um, so maybe it is you know maybe this is considered ILS I mean I I looked and I, I knew how to fly ILS in the past I just never you know I just really don't look into a lot of definition about it so um, you know if I'm getting some of the stuff wrong I mean it's you know I guess, uh, don't hate me for it, but anyways, we're going to continue here, so we're on UVO, so UVO, once we hit UVO, we're going to descend down to 5,000. Let's go ahead and start setting that, and right now we're on T, so let's go ahead and start our descent here. So T is 5,000, we're going to start slowing down the aircraft. We're pulling back the throttle so that we do slow down. So five thousands. There we go. So now we're on to the waypoint T. It's going to start lining us up here, and uh, we're six we're six nautical miles out, so we'll be able to make it. We'll maybe we'll be able to make the descent. So from T, we're still going to maintain uh, two ten knots, two hundred and ten knots. You can see the United Airlines three one six there, and he's flying right above us. He's coming out. Uh, I don't know exactly what runway he took out. Looks like he took. Uh, looks like he took runway two. S no, not two six. Um, what is that runway? Uh, can't really remember, but it's not. I mean, it's not really all that important. Anyways, I need to pull up the charts anyways for Phoenix, so I can get the taxiway down and. Uh, 
make sure I actually taxi the correct way. So it looks like he took off on runway uh, 08, it looks like. So 08 looks to be the runway he's taking on. Now we got the airport in sight. So let's see, we're 2.0 miles out from Tay, as you can see on the list there. So soon we're going to start taking control, so let's zoom in on the uh, board there. Uh, and then once we hit uh, Tay, we're going to hit uh, 4,000. Alright, so let's keep the speed. Alright, let's start slowing it down just a bit. Let's make sure. It's, uh, let's hold at two. We'll hold at about 200. Now we're on to Zamex, so let's start bringing it back down for another descent. To. what was it? 4,000? 4,000 for Xamex. Right, so we're holding a good speed right now. Lined up for 2.8 right. That's 2.8 right right ahead of us. Right. So this is now coming up on Xamex. Let's go on to the next page here. And then Uxcun is 3,000. So that's completely, oh, brought those down just a tad bit too much there. Let's go and start our first degree of flaps, which is five. Now let's go and get rid of that, and uh, we'll get ready to start uh, getting the plane flown manually here. So let's actually go and disable autopilot. 2500. All right. So again, our uh, our altimeters were not set, and that's fine. Um, again, we don't have air traffic controls. I know I could use some research on that, but it's it's uh it's fine. It's all good. All right, so we're at uh, 15 degree of uh, flaps now. All right, looks like we're on that. Uh, we're not on the glide slope. Looks like we're. Apparently too high. I think there's like all whites. I think I see a red now. It's really hard to tell at this distance, but we'll we'll be fine. We'll adjust. We will adjust once we get closer. Alright, start slowing down just a bit more. So we're about an hour and seven minutes into the flight, and uh, say we arrived on time. All right, so let's start getting a little bit lower. Start bringing the speeds down. It's in a little bit too high right now. I think we do have one one red, three white. Can't really tell. I don't want to take my hand off the yoke right now. There we go. I think we're about two red, two white now. I think we're on the glide slope. I think. All right, let's bring another degree of flaps down. Let's bring our gear down. Let's make sure we're not going too slow. So we're kind of a little bit heavy. So we got. I already have the uh, charts next to me on my desk here for um, speeds and and whatnot. So hopefully we get a good landing on us. We'll keep it around two, uh, one, two, eight knots for the landing. So try to get a smooth landing out of this. And there we go. We're on the glide slope. Let's try to stay on it now while maintaining speed. Staying on the glide slope pretty good right now. Maintaining a good speed. Let's try to bring it up just a bit more. Make sure that uh, once we start our flare, we don't completely dive into the ground when we pull back our throttles and whatnot. So we're still on the glide slope. And we got a plane low. We got a person loading over there. So on the glide slope, I think we're about to get a little bit too high. So let's try to bring it down just a bit more. 
Yeah, we're too high. There we go, back on the glide slope. Alright, a little bit to the left and we'll be golden. Now start seeing our lights start uh, still on the glide slope, we're good. Approaching minimums. So I think we'll be able to make it here. Alright, we're still on that glide slope. Alright, now it's all up to us. Alright, and we're down. Reversers. And... 60 knots. Stable reversers. Still holding the brakes. And release. And turn off next taxiway. So we'll turn off up here. So that was acceptable landing. Um, I think I pulled back on throttles just a bit too fast. Again, it's, I'm still trying to get used to this aircraft. It's a bit weird. It's a really weird aircraft with the reversers and all that. Um, and I'll explain that here in a bit once we uh, do an after landing check. So just pull off here. Make sure that I'm fully clear of the runway. Alright, right here is perfect. Spring tiles down bits. Uh, parking brakes. They don't want to enable for us right now. Why aren't the parking brakes working? There we go. Oh, they disabled again. There we go. Alright. So, uh, when we land, basically, um, of course, turn off the landing lights, leave taxi lights on for our taxi, and uh, let's see what the temperature here is. So yeah, we could turn off the anti-ice now. Don't need that on. Turn that off. Alright, so fuel pumps, we could turn those off now. Turn our flaps to normal, to zero degrees. Turn our bleeds off now. So bleeds come off. Set them, they already set the minimum. Alright, so now we just taxi to parking, so let's see what I have here. Because I can't remember. So we gotta go, so we are on 25 right, we are on taxiway, I believe, E, Echo 9. Uh, Echo 8, actually, we're on Echo 8. So we have a terminal right in front of us, that's correct. So we're just gonna go... Uh, we're going to go down to Delta 8, which is off to our front left, and uh, we're going to start uh, heading that way now, so we're not blocking here. So Delta 8 is right there, you can see the light, or uh, we'll go hit, hit Delta. So Delta 8 is just right here, this little, little taxi strip. Alright, and that's the uh, after landing checklist, so we're good on that. Alright, and we made it in time so we can stop our chronometer here. We take here on uh, Delta 8. And then we're gonna go down Delta. Go down Taxiway Delta. Air brakes a little bit so we're not over speed. And Delta. trying to look at a chart on my tablet at the same time as trying to taxi this thing, so I'm going to set that to taxi now, then we're off the runway and we're good to go. So we'll go to terminal 2, it seems like we might be able to get something over there. I'm not really entirely sure on where they would park the dash 8s on this, uh, this airfield, so we're going to pull back the throttles to 850. Uh, the RPM to 850, so pull those back to 850, and uh, we'll start looking for some park. I think we'll be able to park over there. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll hit Delta right now. Right now we're at the last terminal here, passing Delta six. And it should be this turn, we might be able to get some parking in here somewhere. I 
think these are gates, but that's fine. Um, you could park these aircraft at gates. Uh, it's not gonna operate like a gate. Well, it is in this case since it's X plane and uh, X plane. You really can't. Uh, well, in real life, you can't connect a gate. You probably can connect a gate to this aircraft, but usually they would just put a parking ramp on. All right, so this guy's gonna align us up, I believe, in this here, so I think I see the line, yeah, there it is, I'm a little bit off, just a tad bit, so he's going to direct us in here, and then we'll power down the engines, and I think this is a guy, uh, some airports, some of the airports, they, these guys do actually um, guide you in and whatnot, but it doesn't look like this guy has the function to do so, but it's alright, oh, here he goes, so let's start slowing it down a little bit, wait for his... Keep hitting the, keep tapping the brakes. Oh, all right, there we go. All right, so put our parking brake on. It is on. All right, so we can start. Uh, so we're not going to turn off the passengers' uh, seatbelt sign off yet. So at parking, we can turn off our taxi light now. And. Uh, you go, the brakes are on, check. Uh, standby hydraulic and PTU, you can turn those off now. And uh, power levers, make sure they're at disconnect, which they are. Uh, start and feather, so you just push these back. Start and feather. Alright, and then transponder, we'll set that on to standby. APUs now can come back on. Oops. There we go. Missed it. There we go. Okay. So, condition levers, we can now set those off. So, fuel off to spool down the engines. And you hear that ringing? That's just the gate. So, if we go to the wing view here, you can see the prop slowing down. All right, and then while they do that, uh, we could go ahead and get our passengers up and about. So turn off these, and if we go back to the wing view, you can still see our props are still slowing down. Pretty, pretty cool. And save, and then we'll watch that later. So let's continue with the shutdown. So the seatbelt signs are off, passengers are unloaded. We can now turn off our emergency uh, lights for now until the next pilot or ourselves get back in and pilot it again. A research fan can come off. We don't need those anymore. Ignitions can now come off as well. All right, APUs can now come off. Whoops. All right, um, ice protection, uh, any ice was already taken off, which is good. We can now take, uh, close these back up, the engine and the intake. And now we could turn off our batteries, which basically disables all electronics, which we're not going to do. But um, other than that, that's really it. Um, basically just a flight along with me. Uh, from San Diego to Phoenix, so just a quick shuttle flight, uh, approximately was an hour and 12 minutes according to the cr uh, chronometer here. So we took an hour and then we got uh, 12 minutes and I planned this flight to be an hour and 30 minutes, so we arrived a bit, uh, a few minutes early, so that's good uh, for the passengers. Um, but of course we disabled the chronometer when we hit the, uh, when we, after we uh, landed and after we got fully stopped. So. Uh, maybe maybe we're just on time like maybe we arrived at the gate just in time so maybe if I, I should have kept the chronometer on but other than that we landed at one hour uh, a flight or flight time was one hour 12 minutes um, and I'd say we arrived on time 
So other than that, I'm going to start uh, closing up on my tablets and uh, get some of my desk cleaned up here. But other than that, that's really it. That's another, that's a flight there. Um, maybe in the next episode we'll probably go back to San Diego. Maybe we'll go to a different destination. So if we open up our VAT sim here, uh, you can see that uh, we have arrived and now set us to arrived. We have one more person. That's the uh, FedEx 445. You can see the guy that took off before when we right as soon as we're landing. The United Airlines 316 is now... Uh, well on his way to Washington and uh, yeah it was a good flight we got some ATC up in uh, up in Bradley International I've uh, I don't know I might stay on for a bit longer who knows we got some more we got some towers coming on yeah other than that um, hopefully you guys enjoyed um, if you want to see more, please let me know. If you have anything to help me um, improve, uh, anything to kind of help me with uh, the calls, uh, the, the you know getting comms down for VAT sim and so on, um, it's very much appreciated. If you could link, you know, send some links or something, that would be very, very much appreciated. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more, and see you guys in your future.